Welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Network, coming to you from the TeacherCast studios since 2011. Join us each week as we bring you the latest educational news, ed tech updates, and hottest interviews with today's most influential leaders in education. And now, for your host, Jeff Bradbury. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Teacher Cast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making Teacher Cast your home for professional development. This is Ask the Tech Coach Podcast, episode number 73. Today, we're going to be continuing our month of tech coach stories, and I have a fantastic tech coach from the great state of North Texas to talk to you today about how he became a tech coach and what he is doing to lead the digital revolution in his school district. And he has an amazing administrator, somebody who you might be familiar with if you are a fan of this very podcast. We hope that you are enjoying the holiday season. I know this past week we had a little bit of snow and also we had some time with the triplets to put our tree up. We had a great time singing some holiday songs and getting getting wet outside in the snowstorm. I hope you guys survived the blizzard of, what is it, early December 2019 or something like that. We want to know what you guys are doing. Check us out over on Twitter at Ask the Tech Coach and of course over at AskTheTechCoach.com. We've got all of our blogs and our podcasts, and we're even building a pretty cool online course. We would love to have you guys be a part of it. Check it out over on AskTheTechCoach.com. Say hello. We would love to have you guys be a part of this very podcast. My guest today is a digital learning facilitator for a fantastic school district in North Texas, along with running numerous tech ed initiatives on his campus. He also co-hosts the podcast called The Digital Dish. I want to welcome my good friend, Mr. Michael Vick. Mike, how are you today? Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me on. It is so great to have you on here. We've been wanting to get you on for a while. Tell us a little bit about how things are going these days in North Texas. Things are good. It's cold, but not as cold as up there. That's for sure. No, it's certainly not as cold as up here. What is uh, what is the big thing happening these days in Texas? Uh, well, you know, I'm a big TCU fan. And so that, I went to a college football game yesterday. As far as like North Texas, I don't know, just watching it get cold. So tech coach, teacher, podcaster, yeah. right? Yes. Take us back. What, how did you get into education? Why was education the thing for you? What led you into the profession? Yeah, well, it's kind of a long story roundabout way I got there. So I was, I was a psychology major. And then, but my wife was a teacher. And so I volunteered in her classroom and I really, I dug that. Like I really got into like working with the kids and watching them learn and grow. And so I went and got my alternative certification. Then I became a math teacher. I started off in as a special ed math teacher because, you know, from the psychology background in that area. And then I've, I've always been really good at math and there was a higher need in that area. So I was a, uh, so then I became a math teacher. But as far as like the, like I said, it was a roundabout way. So like to get into tech ed, um, I, I definitely use a lot of technology in my classroom. I saw my kids grow and learn with it. And so I really became a part of that area and I just became an expert there. And that's how I got into tech coaching. So talk to us a little bit about that. Were you always into technology and people were pushing you were you pushing yourself because what we find a lot and you know we mentioned this last week on the podcast with nick was you know so many tech coaches are trying to find professional development for themselves and then they get noticed by their school district of oh hey you're you're pretty good at this stuff why don't you uh why don't you come with us what was what was your story yeah that's how it happened very similar yeah I didn't really, I didn't really think of it as a, as a career choice until I was approached about it for sure. You know, in my room, I did a whole lot of blended learning in my classroom, basically Google classroom before Google classroom was what I wanted it to be is mm -hmm. kind of how I ran my room. Like I had my own site, I had my own like things for my students to do on my, on my classic site. I remember classic sites in Google. And so then, um, you know, people noticed that and I, you know, I grew a lot with that and I had a lot of, you know, differentiated learning. And so, um, that's how I ended up in, you know, as a digital learning coach, I, uh, you know, I was sought out and then, you know, also like I really, you know, from a very young age, my dad really pushed technology learning with me. He was a computer engineer. I was on a computer when it was like a half of a room full when I was a kid. 
And so from a very, I've always kind of had a knack for it because my dad pushed that from a early, very early age. And so it just kind of made sense that I ended up here, that the two of them blended together and I ended up here. So your, your official position right now is tech coach or tech coach slash teacher? It's digital learning coach. That's digital my learning type. coach. Yeah. And, and so, it, it's, but that's not, you don't have a, you're, like you're not teaching fifth grade in addition to that. You're, you are right. the guy. Yeah, I'll go and co-teach a lot, but mm-hmm. that's that's the extent of it. Yeah, I'll do I'll do some co-teaching. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll work with a teacher like first and second period and then kind of let them kind of grow into whatever it is that they're wanting, you know, if it's Canvas or if it's a formative assessment tool or whatever it is, and then let them kind of learn it. And I show them all the little tricks that happen, you know, when it's happening to do it live. And then they'll take over, you know, third, fourth period, and then I'll go do it again the next day. Well, we definitely want to touch base on that, but uh, but let's back up just a couple seconds here. You are now tech coaching in the. I'm going to keep calling it tech coaching because that's just what we call it here. Um, yeah, I got no idea. You're in the district that you were teaching in, or are you in a? Did you leave your district to become a tech coach somewhere else? I became a tech coach in the same district I was teaching in initially. So three years ago. I went from eighth grade math teacher slash pre-AP algebra teacher to tech coach in the same district. And it was actually kind of interesting because in my district, that's a lateral move. And so my principal had to give the the go ahead to do it. And she didn't want to lose me as a teacher. And so the only way she let me go be a tech coach was if I stayed at, at the school. So they had to move a whole lot of things around to keep me at that school. And that was a very interesting dynamic, just going from um, co you know, teacher with all these other teachers to kind of not that I'm their boss or anything, but just you know, hey, let's uh, let's learn from me. You know, it's, it just it just became a whole lot different role for me. And uh, at first, it was kind of like um, a flattering because like a lot of teachers I didn't know were very interested in what I was doing in my classroom. But as a classroom teacher, you know, there's just no time to do stuff to ask questions and to go help other people. And so early on, it was actually a lot of fun. I felt like I finally had time to reach all those teachers who were like hidden from asking me all these questions. So how did that work, right? You were a teacher and then you became a tech coach. And as you said, lateral move, full-time tech coach, the whole thing. Now, suddenly, instead of being colleagues with these people on a teacher to teacher level, now you are being asked to go and, I'm assuming you were the first tech coach in the building. So they had to create a position. They had to train people into a position. How did they set you up for success? Did the principal say, you know, this is Mike. He is now going to be your coach. His job is to teach you. Like how, That's always a fascinating topic here on the show. Like, how did that happen? How did they set you up? What were those first couple encounters like? Take us through that. Yeah, well, initially... Um it was uh, it was really strange for me initially. Like I, I wasn't really sure what initiatives I should start, where I should put my hand in. Um, you know, I think like administrator wise, the principal had a whole lot of trust in me because she saw like what my students did and how what I did in my classroom transformed their her learning or those kids learning, and so she had a lot of trust in me, and that helped. Um, I wish that she would had more like. I wish she had more, she was more into the technology. Let me say it that way. Like, and so it was, it was a lot of like new ooh and ah things versus let's dig in deep and see how this can really go to help improve things. And so I wish there was more, more of that, but she did give me a whole lot of opportunities to get in during department meetings, during, you know, team, team meetings. And so that was very integral right in the beginning to be able to get into those small groups where people could ask questions and feel vulnerable and, and was I mean, that easy? I mean, again, you're going from your your friends to now they're your still your friends. Yeah. But, but now you're now were you asking to be invited to these meetings? Did your principal say, "Hey, make sure that you invite Mike. This is his gig now." Like what was that like? It was a little bit of both. I some I mean, these are these are some very very close friends of mine, you know, at this school. And so they were totally cool with like me helping me get in with some other teachers, some of the newer teachers or teachers who didn't know me all that well. 
And so I'd say the ones where it was the most impactful was were the ones where I really leaned on those former friendships. Because you got to understand, like, I was also new, right? I was a new tech coach. I was I, I didn't really know. I, just, I couldn't go and make every classroom my own. I had to help every teacher kind of take those next steps forward. And so as far as administrator, I think really more than anything, more than like saying he's going to these meetings or he's going to be there. So just basically said, hey, meet with Michael if you have any questions. And then I, I took that as a lead to jump in and kind of invite myself into these meetings. Take us through that first year. Right. You're transitioning from that teacher to that tech coach role. You said that these were, you know, good friends of yours. Um, at some point you were in a classroom and you said, hey, Mrs. Smith, you should try this. Was that stuff that you were doing anyway as a teacher? And now you just happen to have more time for coaching. Did they take it? Well, was that how did all that start off and how did it work? How did it, and more importantly, how did it progress throughout the year? Well, I can tell you one, one teacher in particular, like I, you know, I was out of my classroom and I saw my kids change and I was really adamant about going into this, really the eighth grade math room, the one who took my place. I I was going to go in that room and I was going to help that teacher become kind of a blended learning teacher where the kids could really learn a lot of like what I did in my old classroom. And I was ready to show them all the steps. If I could do it, I can teach you how to do it. And I'll tell you, uh, it was it was a very big learning experience for me because I couldn't really go and completely 180 change somebody the way that I had thought. You know, it was really about trying to find those those baby steps or those com- the comfort comfortability they are with with the next steps, and they weren't ready to go from you know how, being a teacher the way the teachers were when they were a student to being a teacher the way. I was a teacher. They weren't ready for that. So you and, walked into the class that you would have been teaching and yeah. you tried to tell that person how to teach the class. You know, not during class. I mean, before, yeah, like before school, we met in conferences. But, that, but, but that makes sense, right? You're like, this is how I've been doing it forever. Here's how right. you can do it. Is that, was that the kind of the conversation? Yeah. yeah. Well, and just also from a world of like, this is all new to me this is something that I knew could be successful. And so I was going to lean on that as like my, my main thing that I did that year. And so it it was really kind of, like I said earlier, it was really just kind of a, a very big learning experience for me to understand that I can't go and change somebody just because I want to change them. I don't have, and and that's an important lesson. Yes. Right. And, and, and look, I'm guilty of this too, especially in my current position, yeah. Many other tech, co- you know, let me show you how I do things. So that way you can then do things how I do things. Yeah. Cause it's great. Yeah. It, it, Cause it's great. And it's wonderful. And look how easy it is. And you realize, oh my goodness, that's such the wrong thing to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I realized that. Absolutely. Yeah. What but was your, know. what was your biggest, um, I don't want to say accomplishment, but what, 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 what did you learn? Like, what was your biggest takeaway from that first, first year of being a tech coach? From that first year, you know, honestly, like, um, it's the, my biggest takeaway was learning from other tech coaches in that, in that area. So they weren't really at my school. I learned a whole lot about like me as a teacher, um, you know, as teaching adults, but like from other tech coaches, they had been around the block quite a bit. And so I learned a whole lot of, a whole lot of tools that I wish I had known when I was in the classroom, you know, I wish I had utilized a whole lot more. I mean, as far as like a biggest single one takeaway, I don't know, like probably where you would go to research that stuff, like the sites that were already in the district that were made for teachers to go find some of that stuff. That was my biggest takeaway was just seeing all those little things from the people who have been doing it. And so now you're in a different district. Am I understanding that correct? Yeah, that was uh, three years in that district. And then about 30 miles up the road, I'm in a different district now. And And talk to us a little bit about that, because it's one thing to be a math teacher and then to be asked by your peers, by your your friend, the you know, the principal, if you want to call it that, to take on this additional role, this different responsibilities. I don't need to go into why you left, but at some point you said, I'm doing this tech coaching thing. Here's another opportunity. 
what qualified you to be a tech coach in another district? Um, I'm assuming like, like many tech coaches like myself, you don't have a tech coach background, tech coach degree. Um, how was the interview process like, and what are you doing now versus what you were doing at your first job? Yeah. Well, I do have a master's in instructional technology, but um, that's okay. Um, now I, uh, yeah, you're right. It is a long story as to why I moved. Um, but as as far as what I'm doing differently, you know, the administration here, as, as the podcast listeners know, Josh Stamper is at my school. He's my, one of my assistant principals mm -hmm. and they've been supportive from, I would say day one, but it really started even before that. Cause towards the end of last year, as soon as I knew I was coming in, they had me in, I think it was like late May, early June or something, you know, at the end of the school year last year. And so I really got a good feel for where they were, where they wanted to be. And um, early on, I didn't jump in to try to make any changes. I didn't, you know, I had ideas here and there, but I didn't like, hey, this is what I want to accomplish. Cause you know, I'm, I'm coming in and like, I, you know, I learned my lesson, you know, three years ago, as far as like going in and turning things 180. And so, now I'm gonna, we're going to ease in a little bit, learn the culture, learn the people, get some friends, some peers, some people to trust, and we're going we're gonna to go from there. What did you learn in your first position that you're using to your advantage in your second position? Um, you know, my, my third year, my last year in my other district, I started to do a whole lot more like – informative sessions, nothing with a particular purpose, but just like a overall, let's all meet at like a standard time. Like it, it's hard to, hard to really explain, but like you, just, you created a system. Yes, that's exactly it. <laughs> yeah. I created a system and, and I helped people know when they could get to me and kept being available more often to make that happen. And obviously new district, these yeah. weren't your friends. Yeah. Meaning when you walked into that classroom, you were the tech coach. Now, were you the first tech coach in this school or were you taking over from a, a previous tech coach? Yeah. So the previous tech coach, Christy McCoy, um, I've gotten to know her really well. She had been there for, I think, like eight years or something before me. And she is a gangbusters on awesome tech coach. Like she really is awesome. And more than just being an awesome tech coach, she's been really awesome about the transition. Like she was there at the end of last year to kind of tell me everything that was there. She had an amazing organization system that she, you know, had all these Google drive folders. She shared with me and explained to me kind of what was going on. And, and also she kind of told me the leaders on the campus who I really needed to get, you know, get in good with early. <laughs> and so she, uh, she really helped me out there. And, um, you know, the district hired three tech coaches this year, and I was one of the three. And she was, this Christy was in the interview, and she specifically chose me because um, I had a lot in common with the principal. I had a lot in common with Josh Stamper. We both have our own podcasts. And so we had a lot to talk about already. And so it was really a great fit, and it has been all year. Really an amazing, amazing place to be. Now, when you're looking at this and you're moving into this position with somebody who had had a legacy there, yeah. um, you know, I, I asked this question of Nick last week, and I'm going to try to see if I can ask you the same thing. Are you running the, the Michael tech coaching program or are you running her program, but with your stamp on it right now? Of those two options, probably number two. Okay. I would say, yeah, at this point, it's probably closer to number two. Now, it's definitely moved away from that as the year has gone on. But early on, I really, you know, I wasn't sure how things, you know, were done. And so just to kind of get a good feel, I had Christy helping me out. Um, but, you know, also um, something that's new this year we haven't talked about yet is Canvas. So, this is new in my in my district, and I know Canvas really well because we started Canvas at my old district a couple years before. And so when it comes to like Canvas, which has been a very big deal on my campus this year, I that has been like the Michael Vick stamp. You see what I'm saying? Like everything else, Christy kind of showed me how things were done, but I also kind of put you know my own little spin on it. 
But then as far as the Canvas thing, which has been like the biggest initiative, just to give you an idea, it's every teacher's professional goal for the year, Canvas. Well, let's talk about that because yeah. when a tech coach joins us on the Tech Coach Mastermind program, which you can do today by going over to teachercast.net slash mastermind, we have a pretty comprehensive online course that we offer as part of the package where we are helping a teacher I'll say it again. We're helping a tech coach learn how to teach the concept of an LMS, right? Yeah. Now, with you going into Canvas, are you teaching teachers right now how to use Canvas or are you teaching them how to create a digital classroom? Where are you in this journey? Cuz yeah. Obviously you would you'd want to start with here's how every button works, but yeah. ultimately your goal is Canvas is just this thing. It's a tool, right? Like, you, you, where are you on the journey? How did you start? What's the long term? Is this a one year plan, a three year plan? Give us, give us the the long and short here of how do you bring in a, a, a learning management system and how do you train teachers to do it? So it's different for everybody. Some teachers already have the mindset of a blended classroom using an LMS like Canvas. Some teachers are already there. Um, I, early on, I thought my biggest opponent was going to be like Google Classroom users, you know, and it turns out those are not my biggest opponents because Google Classroom users understand how a blended environment can work and how it can be successful in today's classroom. But my biggest opponent are the ones who never did anything to be blended. And they're the ones who are like, oh, OK, I got to learn how to do these eight things that do one thing and that helps me how because they, they're not there yet and so as far as what i'm doing i you know i'm going into a lot of plcs a lot of department meetings i'm putting out a, you know my newsletter every week has a canvas tip on it i've um i meet with teachers i've been to um, some conferences with some teachers too and so that was a really cool experience to kind of get those next level users help me you know build other leaders as far as building canvas um, as far as like the year's plan, right? Like for this year, we really want to get everybody's feet wet and we're going to get some power users out of this. We already have. And, you know, going forward next year, the year after that, we'll, I'm sure we'll add some things to, to the professional goals. And I think next year, my big thing is going to be parents, getting parents involved and, and helping and getting them as observers in Canvas, because that will really push things. You know, I've heard from many people, and I've heard this from Canvas, from Schoology, from from PowerSchool, yeah. implementing a, a huge software package like this, an environment, it's a three-year minimum commitment to really get them in. As you said, for this year, just to get them to touch the software is a big deal. Yes. Next year, you're going to bring the community in, and and sometimes, you know, bringing parents in you're doing that to put the pressure on the teachers to say, now you have to use this. Parents have an expectation. Where does your district see this going? Um, and are you a part of those conversations? Um, you know, no, I'm not, I'm not a decision maker when it comes to that, with, you know, making those huge decisions. I think as a district, there this district is different than my last district in that it really wants to leave those decisions up to the campus as far as how far to go and what next steps and everything. And that's really good. Um, I, I can see the difference in the types of users we get from that. You know, when it's pushed on a, on a campus level versus pushed from a district level, especially when we're talking about like uh, the district I'm in now has uh, over 60,000 students and I don't even like, I think there's 14 middle schools, you know, it does, there's a whole lot of people. And so when it comes from like a dis district initiative, it feels so indirect and so far removed, those decision makers, but when it's on the campus, the teachers are more about it. And, and also the digital learning coaches, because I'm only, you know, cause I'm the only one there, I can really be about it. Whereas in my last district, you know, I had multiple multiple people giving input and they weren't, it was, I don't know, it's it very different in my last district here. It's, I can tell it's a lot better when it comes from a campus level decision. You just said 14 middle schools. I think that's right. I'm not totally. I, 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 wow. 
welcome to te- welcome to North Texas, right? Yeah, yeah. How, how many do you know? How many students are in your district? Is this in the district? Of, I, mean, I think there's sixty one thousand. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, and you you just have one building. <coughs> I actually I had two buildings. I had. Two buildings. Um, yeah, uh, my my schedule is a little weird. My other I have a middle school and with like nine hundred and fifty students, and then I also have the career center, which which is very unique in its own. And so I'm at my middle school three days a week, and the career center two days a week. What is a career center, and who is that for? Um, it's it's for high schoolers. Um, it, you know, like there's a lot of engineering classes. There's a lot of there's like a vet tech class, a hospitality, a cooking class. It's like uh, the Career Center has all these specialty things where students can get licenses just to be ready for a career outside of high school or to move on, you know, in college and have a leg up. You know, it's it's a really awesome facility. It's awesome teachers. And is your um, role the same? I mean, you are a tech coach in both buildings, same responsibilities uh, roughly? Um, like, no, I mean, technically my title is the same in okay. both, but it's very – it's very unique at the career center because, uh, you know, a lot of teachers aren't like teacher born and bred. They're like career born and bred. And now they're teaching how to do that. And it's just it's very different because like like I can walk into a, a middle school science classroom and kind of understand the content. Like I may not be an expert on middle school science, but I pretty much know the content. But when I walk into like third year engineering, I'm just like. Let me let's let's go into how we're going to use these digital tools. Like that's all we can talk about because it, it it just becomes it's it's very different there. Almost intimidating in some cases, really. Math teacher turned tech coach turned CTE tech coach. Also, as you're going through here, obviously yeah. you have people that you look up to. Talk to us a little bit about the relationships that you have with your administrators, because I would imagine being a huge district, having a strong relationship with people like Josh um, yeah. and other administrators, that's that's imperative for the success of not only the digital learning program, but also of you as a tech coach. Yeah, so I think, um, you know, it depends on who the administrators are. But as far as me personally, the um, the principal at my at my middle school, we're we've gotten to be pretty close this year. Like just yesterday, she she texted me about her son's writing this paper and had a technology question. Like it's little like little things like that. Like we've gotten to be pretty close, which is great because she trusts me to go into those PLCs and kind of talk about the right, to, you know, guide teachers in the right direction for the right reasons. You know, and I think that's important. At, at the career center, also, I can tell the principal's very. Um, she stands back a little bit because she's also not an engineer or an architect and she can't go to those classrooms either. And so I've really taken her lead um, at the career center, that principal, I've really taken her lead when it comes to like what a, what a, a reasonable step would be for digital learning. And she's done a great job supporting me. Like I'll send an email to all the career center staff and I'll say, Hey, check out these tools. And then she'll come back with a reply all and say, Hey, Michael had a great idea. You guys should really check that out. It's great for 21st century learning. You know, she'll come in and do stuff like that. So would that be good cowboy, bad cowboy? <laughs> no, 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 no. She'll come in and support me. Support you. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, support me. <laughs> support me. And that's oh, yeah. so important, right? And, and, and yeah. you know, any tech coach to be successful needs to have their administrators understand the value of selling them. Right, going into those observation meetings and saying, hey, I would love you to work on this. Mike's the guy. Have you talked to him about this? Or I'd like to see the, the, the school building move forward. Mike's going to be the one that's going to set us up. And he's the expert in this field. You should really go and find him, which is different than saying Mike will come into your room and do this with you. It's just it's such a valuable thing to have an administrator that comes in and wants to actually support you by motivating them. Right. You know, as a former math teacher, I hear a lot of like non-examples, right? As far as like, this is why that doesn't work, you know, as far as like a process for solving something. But, and so like when I can hear stories from other tech coaches that, that tell me about, you know, administrators who didn't support them 
and what they did. And so that's, that was also a really big learning. Like you asked me earlier what a big learning lesson was, you know, there's another thing right there. What didn't work? <laughs> what were your struggles? What are some non-examples? So what were your struggles? This year? <laughs> it's the middle of the year, right? We all have those times where we hit that, that bump in the road and, yeah. you know, teachers are encouraged to find tech coaches as the year starts off. But look, we're busy people. We don't need somebody coming in and helping us out. How do you get through these humps, right? How do you, how do you motivate people to, to use you when it's a busy day and, and working with you is just one more thing and you're giving me homework, right? Like you're, you're asking me to try something I'm uncomfortable with go away. I want to do my own work. I've been doing this for a hundred years. How do you help this out? How do you set this up? How are you being successful in the classrooms? Yeah, I think, you know, it's all about relationships and you're trying to understand where that teacher is and taking them just a reasonable step forward. And, and I think when, when you go in, sometimes you just have to listen to the complaints, you know, just, just be an ear there and, and just hear what they have to say and then say, Hey, maybe like, can you take do this one thing to help improve this one area? And just like with some of those really reluctant teachers who really do like not have time for you, you can just give them something, just a little tidbit. And then what I found is those teachers are like, well, that thing really helped. And I always have to be strategic about the tidbit I give them too, right? Like I don't want to tell them, you know, here's how you create a completely graded by itself thing in canvas that you need to create from start. You know, I don't give them something like that because I know the first time they do that, it's a lot of work. And so I'll give them something like put up a discussion question and then watch your kids go. That's a really quick, easy way to get kids engaged. And even though it's a little bit on, you know, the famous SAMR model, it's a little bit on the substitution side, at least it's something, it's a baby step so that then we can talk a little bit more about, okay, well, maybe they can attach a file to that discussion and then it becomes a little bit more and then you can be a gallery walk online or, you know, just the, a little, a reasonable step to where they are. So how and do you keep that organized? Right. This is one of those, I keep saying this here, but that it's one of those things that we, we talk about a lot. Um, Nick last week said he loves using Google keep to keep teachers organized with the little post-its and, you know, you can tag the different post-its, different things. How do you keep track of all of your teachers and how do you make sure that if you say to me, go do this in Canvas three weeks later when you see me again because of your busy schedule, right? How do, you, how do you organize everything? How do you keep track of everybody? So a Canvas in particular, I have a giant spreadsheet. Um, and I can go in and I can see what any user is doing at any point in time. And so all, I really do. I'll go in and I'll check. And I have, I have it divided off by appraisers. So like... I've shared this with all my administrators. So like the principal has all of their people in one tab and then, you know, Josh has his people on another tab. And then, so I have all, you know, I have it all there and I'll, and I've gone and checked it. Actually, I need to, I need, next, this next week, I need to go through and check everybody's again, just to kind of see where they are. What's, what sort of um, activity has been going on on their canvas. And uh, you know, as far as like canvas, that's where I am there. Um, you know, it's, with other things, it's it's hard to be because a lot of it's not really something you could document. Like, it, it's just kind of an understanding of where people are, like mentally and what and what what they've done in the past. It, it, a lot of it's not necessarily something you could that can be documented. It's just kind of knowing them. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like, it's it's the relationships. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. But again, on the canvas side, I definitely spreadsheeted that up. Yeah, it is like, <laughs> it is, it is crazy. All these check boxes. How do you be effective in your role as somebody who is advocating for, let's just say canvas without having teachers run away from you because they think that every other word out of your mouth is canvas. Like how yeah. do you not become, you know, LMS boy? How, how do you, yeah. right? Like, do, I, I, and, and other tech coaches have said, you know, and I've had this too, uh, you know, Mike, I'm doing okay. And by the way, my website is finished. Like, you know, yeah. Mike, thanks. Thanks. I had a great time this week. And oh, by the way, I use canvas. Like, how do you not 
stigmatize yourself. Right. I, I don't know the right word for that, but h- how yeah. do you not get into that area where mm-hmm. you are, they, they see you coming and they think you have an agenda. That's what I want. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, um, this last, I did a, at the faculty meeting, it was the Wednesday before we left for Thanksgiving break. Um, I did a, I did a presentation and I talked about the Google, the Chrome extension, tab scissors and tab glue, something super easy and simple. And my very first slide was can't this, like there's this logo going around. and cause I, cause, and that was exactly why it's because I was coming, becoming this canvas guy to them. And I wanted to be more than that. And I told them that. So that was one thing I did. Um, but, um, as far as like, you know, I think, um, I, I go into teachers class. Like I never really just sit there and do nothing. You know what I mean? Like if I'm behind my computer for too long, first of all, I would go stir crazy. Second of all, I don't feel like I'm, I'm building on those relationships. And so I'll just go in and I'll walk and like, I, I really like going into math classrooms. Cause also, you know, I miss being a math teacher. And so I'll go into those math classrooms and I've talked to all the teachers. They're all cool with me coming in. And, I, and I'll come in and I, you know, sit down with those little small group that's working on something and just be super non-threatening, you know, I, I, and that's really all I, you know, I'll talk to them about, you know, other stuff that isn't necessarily technology. And I think that's helped too. Um, you know, I think it's just those, those little things that help build those relationships that help you become not the guy who's like a gotcha guy or the, where's the technology guy, you know, cause there are some people who have thought that and I've, Sometimes if it's, I'll even call, call them out. I'm like, Hey, you know, I'm more than that. Like we can, <laughs> if, it's, if it's the right situation, I might even say that. I've heard a lot of tech coaches have to defend the fact that they used to be teachers or they are teachers that just happen to have this role. Now, obviously your first school district, you were the teacher. They knew that you were yeah. awesome. Um, but in your second position, the coin that you're currently in, did you ever feel like you have to justify your education background? Cause the, you know, you just walked in as, as the tech coach. Yeah. I mean, I, you pinned it. You, you really got it right on the head there. Like it's, it really has been uniquely different here than my last experience because I was a classroom teacher. Um, you know, I've talked a lot about what it was like in my classroom and what I've done, but I, I remember very like three or four conversations where I, where I could tell it was like, okay, those are just words. Like he wasn't really like in there with me. And even though I feel like it was only, you know, three and a half years ago, I was in the classroom. I feel like a lot of teachers think three and a half years, too much has changed. He doesn't get it. You know, a lot of teachers and I'm just like, it's really not. And so I've tried to go in and actually work with those kids. And like I said earlier, I do a lot of co-teaching. And so they see me interacting with these students and it really becomes, oh, wow, he really is kind of pretty good at this. You know, and, and I've, I've tried to do more co-teaching this year than I have in the past. And I think it is because of that. I didn't really think about it that way, but that really probably is it to kind of, you know, build that respect, I guess, for lack of a better word. If you had a time machine and you could go back and talk to that first year tech coach or even first year in your new building, I'll let you make the decision. What okay. advice would you give them or would you, what would you give yourself? Um, so we're talking three and a half years ago. I would yeah. probably say probably don't do as much early on. Let me say it that way. Don't don't try to do don't, so much early on. For, meaning like don't, be, don't try to be Superman or don't try to do too much for your teachers. Oh, oh that's – yeah, that's definitely something too as far as doing too much for your teachers. But – I was thinking more like be an observer so that you can help learn about the people that you're going to be working with and trying to, you know, promote a little bit of change in them to, to just stand, stand back and be a listener. So before, do, do more lurking. Yeah. Do more lurking. Exactly. That, that is really good advice. And, and, you know, not to say it one more time, but, you know, even last week with Nick and I, that's one of those things that tech coaches need to understand. You know, we get this job and we feel like we have so much free time on our hands because we can do anything, go anything. And, you know, if we don't have something to do, we feel lost. And I remember my first year as a tech coach, right? Like the bell rings and you feel guilty because you're not going a thousand miles an hour. 
You yeah. want to jump in and do everything. You want to prove. You want to, you know, wag the tail at somebody and go, look at me and look at I can help you. And you got to realize you got to back off sometimes. Yeah, a lot of longer term projects, you know, like that's another thing that's really different is that, you know, as a teacher, you basically do something and you got to you got to be ready to put it in your lesson plan somewhere. But here we kind of put together some things and then we wait for the right time or you, you make it exactly the way you want it. You actually have a little bit more time to do that. And yeah, no, you're right. It was really weird at first. It felt like I was on my conference walking around helping people <laughs> early on. So talk to us a little bit about how you support your teachers. Are you doing weekly newsletters? Do you do after school, before school, lunch and learns? How does, how does the actual PD part, like not the classroom stuff, how does everything else kind of work? Yeah, I'll, I do a weekly newsletter. Um, actually, I just changed it to a Google Slides that has a little bit more stuff on it. And it's more collaborative. I'm working some, with some other tech coaches on it as well. Um, uh, that the news, but that's just one part of it. I'm also going into a lot of uh, professional PLCs on Wednesdays and Thursdays. They have an hour and a half that you like all of the ELA class teachers meet for an hour and a half. And so I'll go into there and like, the, in fact, this, this Wednesday or Thursday, I forgot which day is ELA, but this Wednesday or Thursday is um, I'm going to tell them how to do a breakout, a digital breakout in canvas. You know, like I, I picked these little, like we did discussions once we did, um, Let's see what else did we do we did we did several things in canvas just pretty much that's been happening in these plcs we'll all go in and do one thing sometimes i'll just go in and answer their questions you know because that's the time they have to be the expert in the room now somewhere around here you decided that in order to get the professional development that you need yeah you, you started a podcast tell me a little bit about your show yeah the digital dish so Julia and I, I, I really, it's like a passion project. You know, they, uh, we, we got together. We both love podcasts. I'm really big into, I, I, I listen to a lot. Like I listen to you and I listen to, you know, a lot of, a, a lot of tech podcasts, but I also listen to fantasy football podcasts and, um, she listens to like weird, I don't even know, but she listens to podcasts too. And so we're like, Hey, we both like podcasts. Let's see what it takes to get it going. And so, you know, I started playing a little bit with garage band to get us a nice little look, you know, thing. Anyway, it, at first it was just kind of a, let's see if we can do this. And then that, you know, the next year we started to really get a little bit more consistent with it. And, you know, we talk a lot about like exciting digital tools, things that are going on and at the time we were in the same district, but now we've kind of rebranded it to be kind of a comparison thing between the two districts. Anyway, so it's just something that we love to get together and do. It's nothing really like we're not trying to make any money off of it or anything. We just love to do it. You know what I mean? Where can we find your show? So, oh, yeah, we're on everything. We're on, I mean, it's The Digital Dish. You can go find it on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah. We, of course, have links to everything here in our show. This is Ask the Tech Coach, episode number 73, talking to North Texas tech coach Michael Vick. Who I have to say has a fantastic assistant principal, don't you? Don't you think? Yes. Oh, Josh Stanford's been great. <laughs> he really is. I, I really lucked into that. Like I didn't. He's he's just been really cool. His podcast Aspire has also as inspired me. Like it's it's really a, it's really a great leadership podcast, and he's a, he's a great uh, great AP. You know, it's it's really weird listening to him on your show because for almost an entire episode he was talking about me. It was very, it was like, yes, how was. better feedback can you get from, a, from an administrator talking for 40 minutes exclusively about his tech coach? Like that just doesn't happen anywhere ever. Nope. No, it doesn't. That was a good episode. And we will certainly put the links to all that stuff. Josh is a great guy. And I certainly in encourage anybody out there to check out the Aspire podcast. And you can check out other great educational podcasts over at educational podcast directory.com where we have over 150 great teachers making podcasts for you over at educational podcast directory.com check it out today find a good show for you on your way to work mike thank you so much for your time today as we wrap up is there any advice that you would have for tech coaches out there new tech coaches veteran tech coaches what is on your mind that you might want to as you know 
let, let's do the pun here. Aspire to share with other tech coaches out there. Yeah, I think I think the biggest thing is as long as you're you're taking a step forward every day. You know, I think it's it's tough sometimes to really see your progress and and see the immediate impact that you have, but just trust the process, keep working forward. That's my advice. Now, Mike, we have a thing here on our show that we would love to ask you to do. Would you be interested in taking a, a, a challenge here? We have a five question survey we call the Jersey five, five questions that really get you thinking, really get your mind going. Would you be interested a, a Texas boy yourself? Would you be interested in taking the Jersey five? Um, sure. That sounds fun. Let's do it. Question number one, your favorite Twitter or hashtag to follow and why? Um, well, I can't really say it cause it identifies my district, but I really like to follow my, my specific districts hashtag the blank ISD story. Can I say that? You can say that. Is okay. there, is there a non-district one that you want to also, oh, uh, one. All right, let me go to tweet deck. Let me just go back. <laughs> Let's just see. I like the Google teacher tribe, but you probably don't want to hear that. Why not? <laughs> okay. Google teacher tribe. There I'll you say go. That. We love what Matt's doing. We love what Casey's doing. Yes. Always support other podcasters and stuff out there. Number two, your favorite educational tool. Well, I could say Canvas, but that'd be too (laughs) predictable. I think, um, you know, Edpuzzle. I like Edpuzzle a whole lot. They've uh, recently done a a, a few upgrades, haven't they? They have. They've integrated into Canvas for one. Oh, really? (laughs) Well, you can you can get it as a as an LTI. Yeah, you can add it on. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, number three, these are start to get harder here. The best advice you've ever been given as a tech coach. Let's start there. Best advice I've ever been given. I don't know if like a specific quote would come to mind, but like as far as don't let certain people get you down, I guess like there, there will always be a small population that kind of has a negative technology beliefs that are, that just kind of don't take it. Don't take that personally. Uh, I'll, I'll do three uh, part two here. Best advice you've ever been given as a podcaster. As a podcaster. Um, God, I don't know. I listen to yourself. <laughs> like, don't just do it, but like, listen to it afterwards and adjust. Like I noticed in my earlier podcasts, I was really like, stable monotone but like later on i was like okay i'm gonna try a little bit more i'm gonna bust out and like actually let myself laugh a lot and so that was probably the best advice be more more personality nice all right number four what do you hope your i'm gonna here's how this is said how what do you hope your students remember about you when they graduate at the end of the year? That's usually what I ask teachers, but for tech coaches, I've been changing it to what do you hope is the lasting impression that you leave on your teachers at the end of a year? I hope that my teachers um, honor the effort that they give. You know, it's not it's not always about getting the exact products you want, but like value the learning and the trying and the giving effort, like just to value that and take pride in that and move and you know, be happy with yourself in that area. Nice. And finally, the last question here, what is the best teachable moment you've ever had? Hmm. Teachable moments. Okay, so this is going to be really. This, I'm going to take you way back. All right, so, so seven, in seventh grade, I I'm a, I'm, I play the trumpet and I, I play in an orchestra right now. And so when I was in seventh grade, you know, we were playing our little contests or whatever, and I was I had a solo and I was so nervous that I literally could not see the music. <laughs> and so, like, it, I was like dizzy. It was super weird, but I had memorized it so well. I was so prepared that I had memorized the music and where it is in comparison to the rest of the music. And so that was a very teachable moment because I was so prepared for that, that I had it memorized. And so even though it's not necessarily important to memorize everything, that preparation, I think, is the most important, most te- the, the best moment. Very, very nice. 
Mike, I want to say thank you for your time. And and if, if he's listening to the show and I've already texted him a few minutes ago, I want to say thank you to our good friend Josh Stamper for, for, for suggesting that you be on. We would love to have you back on the show and talk about Canvas, talk about more stuff into your tech coaching world and would love to invite you back on any time, Michael. Maybe, uh, you know, bring, bring, bring is it Chrissy, Christy, Christy. Yeah. Bring Christy with you. Yeah, sure. She'd love to do it. If you are interested in being a featured on ask the tech coach, we would certainly love to have you. You can of course reach out to us on Twitter at ask the tech coach or head on over to ask the tech coach.com. Fill out our little contact form at the bottom of all of our pages. We would love to hear from you and feature your tech coaching program on this very podcast. Mike, before we uh, let you go here one more time, where can people get a hold of you? What are your social and uh, website addresses to check out? Yeah. Um, check me out on Twitter at digital Vic at digital vic um website it's not really i have some portfolios but it's nothing really just just check me out on twitter we'll and anywhere that. that your podcasts are found your podcast yeah. again is called the digital dish and you can and we have a, a handle for that too at the dig dish and all of that stuff is, of course, linked on our show notes pages over here on ask the tech coach podcast episode number 73 linked in our archives over at askthetechcoach.com. So that wraps up this episode of Ask the Tech Coach. We are going to be returning next week with another great tech coach story. Maybe it will be yours. So on behalf of Michael Vick and everybody here on the TeacherCast Educational Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students. You've been listening to the TeacherCast Educational Network, hosted by Jeff Bradbury. Please reach out to the show with all of your questions on Twitter at TeacherCast or online at www.teachercast.net. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss any future episodes. And please take a moment to write a review in the App Store.